In the 90s, this graced many a bedroom wall because it looked like a spaceship on wheels, and now it still does. Out of nowhere, Jaguar unveiled the XJ220, what you could call the world's first hypercar. But behind the scenes, the story wasn't all roses. Let me explain. Back in 1988, Jaguar wheeled out their prototype XJ220 at the British Motor Show. 1,500 wealthy petrol heads couldn't slap their £50,000 deposit down quick enough. However, by the time the car went into production, it appeared to be a shadow of its former self. Unlike the concept, it had no scissor doors, anti-lock brakes or four-wheel drive. And thanks to emission regs and bill costs, gone was the 6.2-litre V12 that had originally been proposed to be replaced by a 3.5-litre V6 turbocharged unit. And by now, the price had gone up a bit, from £290,000 to £470,000. Remember, this was nearly 30 years ago. Not surprisingly, many of the prospective buyers snatched their deposits back, and of the planned run of 350, only 280 examples were ever made. So why is the XJ220 an icon in my view? Well, firstly, it did become the world's fastest production car, a record it held between 1992 and 93, with a top speed of 217 miles per hour. And then there was the bit of the car that Jaguar didn't change. It was a revolutionary moment that has influenced car design ever since. The XJ220 is not just a thing of beauty, it's an engineering masterpiece that keeps one of its major innovations hidden. To find out more, I've come to Don Law Racing, Jaguar specialists who are the world's leading authority regarding the 220, and the only place in the world where you'll see this many together. With one on a ramp, I'll get to see what makes the Jag special, and I'm fortunate to be joined by designer Keith Helfett, who came up with a unique concept. Well, I was responsible for the exterior design of the car. We thought that the car needed downforce. The aerodynamics became the driver to most of what I was doing with the car. So it's the downforce is the force of the air that pushes the car onto the ground. That gives it much more traction. So it can go around corners faster, it can brake faster, it can do most of its handling much better. So how does the XJ220 create its downforce? Well, it's all to do with different air speeds. If I take these two sheets of paper and blow between them, you would expect them to blow apart, but they don't. They actually suck together. That's because fast-moving air creates an area of low pressure relative to the slower air around it. An aircraft wing is more curved on the top than the bottom so the air is forced to travel faster over the upper surface and this creates lift. The XJ220 simply takes this concept and flips it upside down. Rather than big wings on the top, they went underneath with a design that sucked air upwards, forcing it to accelerate, which created lower pressure compared to the air going over the top. And it was this revolutionary piece of engineering which not only created the downforce, but also influenced the future of car design. These curves are creating that shape which makes this want to push down onto the road. So it creates downforce. And before all you boffins complain that the physics are not quite as simple as this, that's the bare bones of it. And the name given to this brilliant aerodynamic device, a diffuser. The underside of the car all of a sudden becomes as important as the top of the car. Everything was developed smoothly into a diffuser. This is the first time this has ever been done on a road car. Well, we didn't think of that at the time. In fact, history, I think, has told us that it was the first time. <laughs> so now that I've got my head around what's going on underneath, I went out for a spin with Justin, who's the owner of this example and the encyclopedia of all things XJ220. Holy! <laughs> that is devastating. It's just cement and the handling. They just really just... Hold the road beautifully. <laughs> Look at you, how can you not love that? So, fancy a go? Oh, come on. Honestly, absolutely. Let's do it. I'm going to drive it. I'm going to drive a 220. Right. I'm Let's getting out, it. I'm getting in. Oh my 
gosh! That is just ridiculous. And this car actually, as much as being an advance in what we know and how we build cars, it was just an exceptional thing. It's just perfect. You know, it doesn't scream, it doesn't howl, it, it just goes and gutsy and brutish and wonderful. Oh. The XJ220 is such a privilege to drive, and I'm so in awe that my words just stop forming. Ah. Ah. Its influence is clear to see on cars today, from a McLaren to a Megane. They've all adopted the sleek diffuser underside to improve traction and handling. I'm going to struggle to let go of this steering wheel. The XJ220. What a car.